neck of femur fracture is an elderly patient this is becoming a major public health concern because if you see the uh, prediction it is targeted to reach around 3 6.3 million in 2050 that's a huge number so neck of femur fractures in elderly the now the buzzword is surgical management which is of paramount importance why is that the rehabilitation at the earliest will give the best results and also to avoid complications both patients surgically and also medically we have to avoid complication for that the surgical management is very important so if you look at the uh, pattern of neck of femur fractures the valgus impacted neck of femur fractures sometimes it is neglected or it is sometimes if it is it is treated overboard like you you tend to see a neck of femur fracture and immediately go for a some sort of big surgical procedure like a hemi or a thr but in valgus impacted the best method of treatment will be a cancellous screw fixation and the patients do well particularly uh, a very good valgus impacted seen in both the uh, ap and lateral views the moment you see that do not take a traction and internal rotation view and then go ahead and fix with the cancellous screw fixation and the patients do well so what is the message from these valgus neck of femur fractures the bipolars are not the all in one solution and the closed neck of uh, cancellous screw fixation is the treatment of choice in valgus impacted neck of femur fractures in elderly but on the contrary we see routinely a displaced neck of femur fractures like this all in 17 70s and 80s so this is becomes a big challenge why this is a big challenge because there are too many choices for this treatment uh, in a displaced neck of femur fractures what are those the total hip replacement bipolar hemi arthroplasty monopolar hemi arthroplasty modular bipolar hemi so much options are available because of this it becomes a big challenge to select which is the best one so if you look at the management of hip fractures it is based on the location and the majority of the cases it is an intracapsular fractures and it is 80% of the time it is a displaced so if, in the literature also it is very well documented that displaced intracapsular neck of femur fractures in an elderly should be treated with an any one of the arthroplasty procedures so in a neck of femur fractures recently published article in a european journal if you look at that the neck of femur fractures in frail patients associated with risk of cardiovascular pulmonary and thrombotic uh, complications the surgical delay is the one which increases the mortality so the best option will be to time the surgery the surgery after 24 hours raises the chances of perioperative complications such as the pulmonary embolism pneumonia dvt and also pressure ulcers so we have to make sure we are uh, trying to optimize the patient uh, hemodynamically as quickly as possible and perform the surgery at least within 48 hours to reduce the mortality risk so the type of surgery also plays a very important role the current registry data suggests that around 90% of the displaced intracapsular fractures are treated with hip hemiarthroplasty whereas only 10% is treated with a total hip replacement that is actually not a good number at all why is that between 50 and 8 75% of the elderly patients are actually not frail they are all nowadays the life expectancy has gone so much so nowadays the patients uh, activity level also increase so the biological age should determine the choice of the implant so the high functional requirements and low biological age actually has now it leads to a paradigm shift towards a total hip replacement instead of hemi arthroplasty in healthy elderly patients 72 years male who is very active and not much of comorbidities only hypertension a total hip replacement is a very good choice and if you look at the ni nice guidelines the thr should be the choice in a displaced neck of femur fracture if the patient is independent community uh, is mobile inside his community very much uh, alert or oriented and he is medically fit enough to undergo a procedure that means the comorbidity should not be that much at least one or two minimum and diabetes if it is have to be very well controlled so hemi arthroplasty for neck of femur fractures in elderly it is also a good option but the selection of patient should be proper in old age frail patients in lot of comorbidities are present and impaired cognitive function and neurologically challenged patients are the best for hip hemi arthroplasty so look at this 81 year old female displaced neck of femur fracture osteoporotic uh, bipolar hemi arthroplasty then one more 79 year old trivial flaw neck of femur uh, uncontrolled diabetes so these are patients who are suitable for a bipolar hemi arthroplasty but look at this patient 80 years old male active walking well uh, medically no comorbidities except for hypertension 
this patient underwent a unipolar hemiarthroplasty outside so subsequently it went on for an aseptic loosening and at this stage this patient had to undergo a major revision so to avoid this revision these kind of failures to we have to select the patient appropriately and in this patient would have benefited from a totally pre placement in the primary situation so another unipolar hemiarthroplasty uh, look at aseptic loosening so this patient had to undergo a distal loading uh, revision bipolar processes stem breakage is very very common in old age patients again this is a 73 year old active in patient so these kind of cases better to go for a totally pre placement so message from these cases any age group we should not perform a unipolar uh, hemiarthroplasty unless otherwise it's a very emergency situation and better to do a modular bipolar so what is that the next option the modular bipolar hemiarthroplasty where the head and the modularity uh, gives us the chance of putting in a bigger head and also we can use the uh, total hip uh, replacement uh, uh, femoral stems so the nice guidelines also says that using a femoral stem design rather than an austin moore or a thompson stems for hemiarthroplasty is a better option so a uh, uh, hip hemiarthroplasty if at all we are doing a cemented modular bipolar hemiarthroplasty through an anterior lateral approach is a uh, better choice to prevent dislocation 75 year old neck of femur fracture underwent a modular bipolar in uncemented situation uncemented system whereas an 82 year old female underwent a cemented modular bipolar so these modular bipolars the longevity is better the dislocation rates are uh, less and also the patient can be mobilized at the earliest but however studies have found a higher risk of serious complication resulting with uncemented devices in these kind of population particularly a perioperative periprosthetic fracture so we have to be very careful the surgeon has to decide based on the pre fracture activity level comorbidities cardiac status and available implants and also the surgical skill of the surgeon but still perioperative decision should be final based on the implant uh, sorry based on the uh, bone condition and also the osteoporotic level so to conclude here a posterior approach gives has a got a higher rate of dislocation and more reoperation compared to a lateral and anterior approach in a hemiarthroplasty situation particularly for fracture neck of femur in an elderly because of the lax capsule uh, the better option will be a lateral or an anterior approach. so that's what they have concluded so to summarize this in a hip fractures particularly of displaced neck of femur fracture in an elderly proper pain management surgery within 24 hours and early mobilization hemodynamic stabilization uh, all gives a very good medical outcome better uh, surgical uh, post operative outcome and also the choice of operative treatment should depend on the comorbidities activity level and the biological age not the chronological age thank you